67 points a game. The Wheelers are poised for a perfect ending to a flawless season. Coach Tom Luganville and Tennessee Valley are ready to stop Quad City's run at perfection. The Vipers possess one of AF2's stingiest defenses, but they also can light up the scoreboard behind the pass-catch combination of Brian Snyder and Kelly Fields. We'll see which team will be the first to get its name on the Arena Cup as the AF2 crowns its champion tonight on TNN Sports. <laughs> week in the Quad Cities of Illinois and Iowa, and they've been partying long and hard in Davenport yesterday and outside the arena in Moline, Illinois today. They've been partying hardy because their team, the Quad Cities Steam Wheelers, are undefeated, and we are live at the mark of the Quad Cities for Arena Cup 2000, the championship game of AFL 2, the Tennessee Valley Vipers representing Huntsville, Alabama and the Quad City Steam Wheelers. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mark of the Quad Cities. It is a sellout, as is virtually every game here at this arena. I'm Eli Gold. Alongside is Mark May. What is AF2? Well, simply put, this is arena football for medium and small-sized communities. And Quad City, they have been remarkable this year. 18-0 included in that list is two wins already over Tennessee Valley. One game was a close one. The other one got out of hand after Tennessee Valley turned the ball over some six times. Now, Mark May is so big here in the Quad Cities, they've even named the arena after him, the Mark. All right, Mark, how about trying to beat one team three times in a given year? How tough? It's very difficult. Playing 10 years for the Washington Redskins are multiple playoff appearances. Head coach Joe Gibbs was always concerned about playing a team for the third time in the same season. The reason being, one, overconfidence of your players. Two, the opposition knows your team as well as you know yourselves, and they have an opportunity to correct their mistakes and use it against you. Now, let's start with the stars of these games and teach you a little bit as to who's who. The quarterback for Quad City is a good one. Former Purdue Boilermaker Billy Dick and he's taken this offense to new heights. He definitely has. He may not be a good quarterback this year. He may be a great quarterback this season. Here he's got great touch on the football. Knows how to throw the corner route. There it is to Sean King for a touchdown. Has scrambling ability. Knows what to do with the football. What I like about Billy Dickin is he protects the football. 86 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. Now, for Tennessee Valley to be in the ball game, it's going to have to be a team effort, particularly on defense. But when you take a look at their defensive numbers, they may just have the defense that could slow down quite Cities. Well, as a total defense, they're one of the best in AFL 2 football. They're going to have to get out to the quarterback with their front three, and their corners are going to have to do a great job of covering downfield. But what this team definitely has to do, Eli, force turnovers. They force 53 of them this year. They're going to have to force a few more tonight. But Quad City scores 67 points tonight. Who knows what's going to happen? Folks, stick around. The fans here at the Mark have been dancing all season long as their team has run the table in AF2. Do the Wheelers have enough offensive firepower to make it a perfect season, or will the Tennessee Valley defense ruin the party tonight in Moline. Arena Cup 2000 is next on TNN Sports. Boom! Stop dead in his track. That's how fast, tough-acting Tenactin pump spray works. Tenactin stops the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than Lamisil AT. Tackle athlete's foot symptoms in seconds with tough-acting Tenactin. Want laundry as fresh as the mountain air? Try Sierra. Once bugs get into your home, there's only one way to get them out. Call the man, the Orkin Man, at 1-800-800-ORKIN. Hi, do you have any mozzarella? Sorry, we're all out. Give me a pound of mozzarella. How about some nice provolone? Where's all the mozzarella? Well, Dave Thomas put it on Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme. Now we're all out of mozzarella. Two slices of mozzarella, a plump, juicy whole chicken breast fillet topped with a delicious Parmesan sauce. It's a mouth-watering combination. Dave, Dave, Frankie's coming. Day. Come in and try Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme today. And remember, Wendy's pickup windows open late, so you can eat great. Thanks for stopping. Even late. Seven strokes per second. That's pretty much the cleaning speed of an ordinary toothbrush. 150 strokes per second. That's the cleaning speed of the new Colgate Active Brush battery powered toothbrush. It's designed to clean hard to reach places. Ordinary toothbrush. Colgate Active Brush. 
Which do you think is clinically proven to clean better? For about $20, the Colgate ActiBrush, the power to clean better. You're sweating like crazy. You got TV cameras all over you. The last thing you want is this white clumpy thing running down your arm. It's just rude. We asked some of the hottest pros under the sun to switch antiperspirants. It's a green visible solid? What's that? I would assume it goes on clear, but I'm not sure I believe that. When your body heats up, the green invisible solid releases extra protection with a clear difference. Right there. You see, there's no white stuff. The harder I work, the harder it works. No flaking, no funk, no Klingons. Degree Invisible Solid works hard but never shows. After the match, there's a ton of girls. You gotta be cool. From the banks of the mighty Mississippi, Arena Cup 2000 on TNN is being brought to you by Degree, the body heat activated antiperspirant, and by Tenactin for tough cases of athlete's foot. There is tough actin, Tenactin. A spectacular day. There is the Mississippi and the mark of the Quad Cities. A beautiful 9,500-seat arena here on the banks of the Mississippi. And everybody's battling for what the Blues Brothers are protecting. The AF2 Championship Trophy Arena Cup. One of the coaches involved spoke earlier tonight with Jill Arrington, Tennessee Valley coach Tom Luganville. Eli, I'm here with the head coach of the Tennessee Valley Vipers, Tom Luganville. You're going up a against a great team. They were 18-0. You met them twice earlier in the season, had some tough games against them. Was it hard to get your team motivated for such a big championship game? Not at all. You know, we're glad to be here. We feel we earned the right to be here. Uh, we played the toughest schedule in the league. And it, it has been a long, hard ride. But uh, I really feel the two best teams are in the championship, and I think that's the way it should be. So we're proud to be here. And we didn't come up here to be in the game. We came up here to win it. Well, you've got a great defense. How are you going to control their uh, offensive attack tonight? Well, I think uh, arena football starts with pass rush. And if we can disrupt their quarterback and uh, force him to make some errant throws and some incomplete passes, get a few defensive stops, I think that's going to be the key. And uh, we've had a great defense all year long. Our secondary has played well, but it's been because of our pass rush. So we know that's the key. We know what we've got to do. Like you said, we've seen each other twice. So it's going to be a heck of a football game, and whoever makes the least amount of stakes, turns the ball over the least, is going to win the game. All right, well, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Back to you, Eli. All right, Jill, thank you. There, meanwhile, is Frank Hagee, the head coach here in Quad Cities in his sixth season of arena football, including, as you see, time with New Jersey. They are the officials. They have earned their way here. Tom McCabe, who normally officiates games here. Rod Allison from Jacksonville. Rich Groovy in Quad City also has Bob McElwee. And from the Tulsa Talons officiating crew, Donald Gashaway, they have all been ranked to work the championship game. There is Sean King. He is deep for Quad Cities. He will handle the kickoff from Michael Proctor of the Tennessee Valley Vipers. And we are so glad you're with us. Arena Cup 2000 is underway in the Quad Cities. Off the net, King. Finds a hole. Proctor is back. Taking no time at all. Touchdown. 55 yards, Sean King. It will be his longest run back of the year. He had a 54-yarder earlier, and it will be his sixth kickoff return for a touchdown. Quad City's wasting no time. Sometimes the biggest returns are on muff handles. Here he muffs the ball, picks it up, gets great blocking. Look at the hole. There's no one around. And where are the Tennessee Valley Viper coverage team? Now it's just speed outrunning the kicker. He's off to the races and gone. Tremendous job of blocking. You never saw a Tennessee Valley Viper jersey next to him. It takes no time at all. And the 18-0 Quad City team now trying to add the extra points. Handling the kicks, Brian Hurley, formerly of the University of Iowa. 7-0 for Quad Cities. All right, Mark May, how demoralizing for the visiting team coming into the other guy's building. It's a sellout. The other guys are 18 and 0. How demoralizing it is to be down on an opening game kickoff. It's an incredible letdown for this football team. The head coach, Tom Luganville, has to get his troops fired up, saying, hey, it's only one touchdown. We're right back in it. But no one is close to him. Tremendous blocking. The rush came from the outside on the coverage team. He took the ball right up the gut, right exactly where the wall was designed to go, and no one was even close to him. Quarterback Billy Dickin reacting to the positive on that run back by Sean King. Glad you're with us for Arena Cup 2000. 
By the way, if you're not familiar, we refer to Quad Cities. Quad Cities gets here by virtue of defeating Pensacola and Norfolk of Tennessee Valley beat Tulsa, then upset Augusta the other day. And Tennessee Valley likes to keep the scores close. As you can see, quad silly. They like to run away with a football game. Tennessee's going to have to rely on their defense to try to slow down the offense, but they can't forget about this high-potent special teams group. They can return them for touchdowns, as you've just seen on the first play of the game. Kelly Fields, number 15, is deep for the Tennessee Valley Vipers. Early boots it away. Over the shoulders, seven yards deep. Nothing there. And down he goes. Russ Van Wetzinga putting Kelly Fields away. And here comes Brian Snyder, the quarterback, Tennessee Valley Vipers. Brian Snyder's been a very consistent quarterback this year, put up some big numbers, protects the ball very well, can run with the football, as you see, but he's a smart quarterback, can read defenses and look downfield with the football when he has to. Snyder at Albright College had spectacular numbers, and there you see his numbers here in AF2, not all that bad at all, as Mark was saying. Snyder from his own end zone, looking towards Fields. It is short, coming back. Couldn't make the play with Cornelius Coe, number two, handling the cover. There is the Tennessee Valley offense. The man they just threw to, Kelly Fields, number one receiver. Not really that fast, but he does make the plays. Jefferson Norwood and Andy Fuller, great tight end from Auburn. With those regular season receptions that you see, he's a big, big part of the Tennessee Valley offense. On the second and ten. Fields in motion. There's the button hook to him. Four and eight yard pickup. Out to the ten yard line. Again, the man they call CC. Cornelius Cole making the stop. There you see the defense. Spencer Stevens. He's from Moline High School. Right here in Moline, Illinois. And there you see Cornelius Cole. Defensive Player of the Year. That award handed out last night. Eight interceptions, 21 passes broken up this season. Now on third downs, Tennessee Valley 50% on the year. Here's a third and two. Snyder looking, throws it off the mark, looking for Bobby Washington, number five. Brian Snyder has to calm down and settle down. He's throwing off his back foot. That time he got pretty decent protection, a chance to step up and throw the ball downfield. He needs to settle down in the pocket. Here you're going to see the rush and the pressure put on by big number 99 at the end of the play, Jamar Ward. But quarterback Brian Snyder has time to throw the football. He's got one man out on the route. He gets open. If he fires it a little bit earlier, it's going to be a reception. So now Michael Proctor who has had a 43-yard kick this year, will try a 56-yarder right here. Booms it, has the distance, but not nearly the accuracy. Takes a wild bump. Remember, it's a live football, and there is a flag down. The football is ruled a touchback, but there is a flag. Referee Tom McCabe will handle the announcing for us this evening from the field after the officials talk things over if you're not familiar with quad cities two of the cities are in illinois moline and rock island two of the cities are in iowa davenport and bettendorf the three yard penalty enforced in the five yard line first down so the mark off and we are going to take a break with a timeout on the field 7-0 Quad Cities, they show the way after the game-opening kickoff return by Sean King. Kids don't come with instructions on keeping them drug-free, but if they did, this is what they'd say. Call to find out what else you can do. 
hungry for seafood? When your hunger strikes, there's only one thing to do. Head to Red Lobster for lobster and shrimp. Sweet, succulent lobster together with mouth-watering shrimp. Just $12.99 right now at Red Lobster. So hurry in and get it before it's gone. GNN Action Wednesdays are hotter than ever on the Magnificent Seven. Is that little Billy Travis? Mary's son comes home. Dan on 18 Wheels of Justice. You're driving us out of here. Agent Baxter is in trouble. And on Dead Man's Gun. His name is Boucher. He has to pay for what he's done. The action starts at 8 Eastern with the Magnificent Seven, followed by 18 Wheels of Justice at 9 and Dead Man's Gun at 10. Only on TNN Action Wednesdays. One hot night. Quad City has the lead on the football, but before we go back to game action, let's check in with Jill and learn about tonight's Superstar Spotlight. Jill? The AF2 has its superstars, too, and you've already seen what this guy can do tonight. Tonight's spotlight shines on Quad City's offensive specialist, Sean King. In the regular season, King led the AF2 in scoring and all-purpose yards while coming in second in both receptions and receiving yards. Last time these two teams met, he caught 10 passes for 118 yards and a touchdown. The Tennessee Valley defense will look to limit those numbers tonight. Back to you, Eli. All right, Jill, thank you very much. Here we go now. First time to look at the Quad City offense. King, Vistendahl, and Patterson. Van Wetzinger is the fullback. Motion man is Sean King. Dickens sets up the screen. Big one to Jamar Ward. Look at him rumble, and he goes out of bounds. He goes out of bounds. When is the last time you saw somebody 6'3", 335, lumber on a 20-yard screen pass? And he carries it well. And I'll tell you, those big offensive linemen, this is a thing of beauty. A screen on the first play. Keep an eye over here. Watch the big guy, Jamar Ward. He's just going to come out on it. Jamar Ward's just going to just come out on the screen. Great job of just turning his defender up the field to play. Turns around. The ball's right there. Billy Dickin, an excellent throw. Look at the big guy going down the sidelines. He wants pay dirt. He wants pay dirt. But it's going to be a penalty behind the line of scrimmage against Quad Cities. And Eli, you know the worst part about it? You get a 330-pound guy rambling down the football field and going 40 yards on the run. Now he's back there. He's sucking wind. He needs to get the air underneath him. Jamar Ward, probably the top lineman on the team out of Morningside College. Pretty, pretty agile, really, for a big guy. After the markoff, though, Dickin from his own three. Nice grab. Out towards the 20-yard line. Scott Vistendahl put away by Grady Brown after a 17-yard pickup. There you see the Quad City offense. Sean King, number one receiver, the go-to guy. He's really, really quick. Jamar Ward, not that quick. <laughs> but, but agile came over from the Iowa Barnstormers of Arena Football. So he's a good one. You need a bazooka to slow him down. From their own 20-yard line, Come Quad on. City in the Come blue. On. They try to draw him offside. They do. Free play for Dickin. Billy looks. Billy finds King. Touchdown, Sean King and Quad City. It'll be 29 yards. But let's see. Does it count, or will it be coming back? It's a touchdown for Quad City, as they did indeed do enough movement there, and Herky Jerky stopped to draw Tennessee Valley off. If you're a defensive lineman, Jason Stewart, you have to watch the football. He didn't. He jumps offside. But the smart plan is quarterback Billy Dickens, wide receiver Sean King, they know they have a free play. They do not give up on the play. But David not gives up at the end of the play because he thinks it's a dead play. When you see a flag on the football field, you always finish the play till the whistle's blown. Ready. Now Brian Hurley. The extra point just does sneak in. 14 0 the score. Billy Dickin knew it was good. The championship game, Arena Cup 2000, going QC's way. Well, hello there. He was born a country boy. My, it's been a long, long time. 
and he loved to sing a country song. Make the world go away. Time Life Music proudly presents the Elvis Presley Country Collection. I'm a jack to a king. I'm a lonely master to a You'll get 30 unforgettable songs. Just take good care of her. And when Elvis sang a country take song, it came straight from the heart. You give your hand to me, and then you say hello. Get the and Elvis Country Collection on two CDs or two cassettes. Well, I'm in my blue, I'm in the go again. Thirty classics. What a rainbow turn. Songs every country fan loves. Your cheating heart. Well, you in. So many great memories. Pardon me if I'm sentimental. So many beautiful performances. Welcome to my world. Then audition other great Elvis collections. Won't you come on in? Satisfaction guaranteed. You were always on my mind. But remember, Elvis country is not in stores. You were always on my mind. So please call now. Call 1-800-656-7744 to order Elvis Country for $19.99 for two CDs or two cassettes plus $3.99 shipping and handling. That's 1-800-656-7744 or send check or money order to Elvis Country, Department 8, Richmond, Virginia, 23280. Call 1-800-656-7744. At the mark of the Quad Cities, the Steam Wheelers, who normally score once every 4.7 plays, not even taking that long tonight, big guy. Not at all. They know how to attack when they get the football. That's the guy right there, Sean King. He's touched the ball twice, two touchdowns already. Kickoff return and now reception. And with his ability to get behind defenders, very, very tricky. Kelly Fields is deep to handle Brian Hurley's kick. Seven yards deep. Fields with some running room. Out to the 10-yard line after it was uh, Damon Williams putting him away. And Sean King on the outside. Another look. It's a deep post pattern right here. But look at the head right here of David Knott. He looks inside when the flag is thrown. Takes his eye off of Sean King for one instant. You never let a guy when you're one-on-one -on -one get behind you if you're covering as a defender. And on that play, Sean King blows by David Knott. Easy touchdown. So now Tennessee Valley's Vipers. Brian Snyder, the quarterback. He has played in the German League of American Football, not to be confused with NFL Europe. But he's got that experience complete. Ronald like Collard that. out across midfield. CC Cornelius Cole will put away Ronald Bonner out of Jacksonville State by way of Moultrie, Georgia. And Cornelius Cole gives him an easy reception. Bonner on the outside. Look at the cushion. Catches the ball. Where's Cornelius Cole? Here he comes up and makes the tackle. He's the number one tackler in AFL 2 with 139. He makes great tackles, but he's got to get closer to the receiver. That's too much separation. That's easy pickings out there on the outside for Ronald Bonner. Cole, though, is an assassin in the defensive backfield, man. He's tough. On the first down play with Fields in motion. Knocked away neatly intended on the near side for Bonner. Hiawatha Pfeiffer came up with it. And there you see where the souvenir goes. Bobby Washington. Here's the quarterback, Brian Snyder, looking at it. He's going to get pressured by big number 90 going right up the middle. Right there is Sean McNamara. He can't see the receiver. He's got to release the ball about a split second before he wants to. But at the end of the play, great coverage down the field to play. The player that we are talking about a lot, the defensive secondary in this team, Hiawatha Pfeiffer, is very quick to the football. And he was a defensive back in college at Western Illinois. So he's playing his normal position now. From midfield, Snyder. Fields misfires again. Kelly Fields, another of the nine players from Alabama A&M University 
who dot the Vipers roster. The Vipers are based at the Von Braun Center in Huntsville, Alabama. That's where Alabama A&M's campus is. And I like Kelly Fields. The reason why, led the AFL to an all-purpose yards. He leads him in playoffs right now, but he's a very crafty wide receiver. Not very big, 5'11", 185, but he knows how to utilize his skill. Tom Luganville says, this is the guy we try to get the football to. He's not very fast, but we design plays to get the football to Kelly Fields. Tennessee Valley, 0 of 1 in third down conversions tonight. Bobby Washington is the motion man. On the third and 10. Off the mark to Fields, who got tied up again with a flag on the play. That time, Cornelius Cole got tied up with Kelly Fields on that crossing route. And we'll see how the officials rule it. Tom McCabe is our referee here at the mark. Cornelius Cole, all-conference, four years in a row at Northern Michigan. And as we mentioned earlier, voted on by the coaches in the league as the defensive player of the year at AF2, but got caught that time. And, and that's a tremendous honor when your peers, the opposing coaches, think that you're the best player in the league, and that's the best defensive player in the league. That says a lot for this young man. He's had an outstanding season. If you catch the ball next to him, he will put you in the turf. He is a big-time hitter. That was a pivotal third-down play, though, because you can't afford to be down two touchdowns and not make your conversion. Snyder, nice grab behind him by Bobby Washington. Had to spin around to come up with the football that time. One thing I like about Brian Snyder is he's throwing on his third drop. Boom, boom, boom. Get rid of the football. The fifth drop. Boom, boom, boom. Fifth step. Get rid of the football. He's going to have to do it because he's getting a lot of pressure up front. And this offensive line has to do a better job of holding up Eli. Now you see the coach there, Tom Luganville. He was a teammate of the guy who just caught the football, Bobby Washington. They were teammates together at Eastern Kentucky University. Luganville's only 26 years old, you know. It almost looks like he can lace him up and go out and play today. He's got players on his team who are older than he. <laughs> Snyder throws a bullet. Great defense. Great defense by Clarence Thompson, number seven. What a super stop by the number three tackler on the ball club who has broken up nearly 20 passes already this year. Now, this is a phenomenal job of Clarence Thomas right here. Looking at the football, he's watching the quarterback. You're going to see him right here. Keep an eye on number seven. As soon as the ball's thrown, it's close to him. He's got his right arm on his back, but his left arm comes out in front and tips the ball away. That's great coverage. A former Nashville Cat who is probably the best pure cover man in the secondary for Quad City. There you see one of two tonight. The last conversion came on a penalty. Fields in motion. They go the other way. It's caught. Near side. Touchdown, Tennessee Valley, Ronald Bonner, 11 yards. Terrific job by Ronald Bonner, keeping his eye on the football. Hiawatha Pfeiffer tries to go for the interception, but Bonner does not go for that. He keeps his eye on the football. Here's great concentration. This is what Bonner sees. The ball's coming right at him right there. There he's breaking on the ball, just spins away from him, walks him for the touchdown. Folks, do you know how huge that was? That's a big-time confidence goal for this football team. If they don't score on this possession, they could possibly be down another touchdown as fast as Quad City can put points on the board. Michael Proctor, the former Alabama Crimson Tide star with the extra points. Well, they got it done. Brian Snyder got his team on the board. We've got a football game here in Moline, Illinois. Introducing new Castrol Super Clean Tire Gloss. It's specially formulated to give tires a brilliant shine. New Castrol Super Clean Tire Gloss. Shinier longer than all leading brands. Boom! Stop dead in his track. That's how fast, tough-acting Tenactin pump spray works. Tenactin stops the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than Lamisil AT. Tackle athlete's foot symptoms in seconds with tough-acting Tenactin. 33 years, over 700 billion starts, and now Die Hard is stopping. Car thieves. Introducing the Die Hard Security Battery. To learn more, call us or come see it at Sears. This I call the Young Family Special. It's reliable, it's practical, but uh, got a little edge to it. This car says family. Follow more. Check this out. Huh? Huh? There's only one seat. Huh? 
Keeps the family closer. This isn't safe. Of course it's safe. It's safe with a little edge. Edgy safe, I like to call it. The Colonel's Truck Accessories Nationals, August 20th on TNN. There you go. Soccer Mom Specials right there. Hey, Jeff. Uh, uh, Tim. Tim, Timmy, Timbo. You like to make a lot of left turns. I'm left-handed. Me so. too, me amigo. <laughs> Check this baby out. This thing was born to take left turns. Oversized tires, roll bar. Check out that wing on top. Huh? I like the wing. Mm -hmm. Honey? Hate the wing. She hates the wing. The Amico Knoxville Nationals, Saturday at 10 Eastern on TNN. ECW Wrestling in the Thrill Zone on TNN. Tommy Dreamer and Jerry Lynn look for a little payback against Steve Carino and Scotty Anton. Psychosis returns triumphant in a battle with little Guido Maritano. And the babe and boys in blue take a beating. Wrestling like you've never seen. ECW Wrestling, Friday at 8 Eastern, part of Thrill Zone Friday on TNN. Welcome back, everybody. It is a beautiful building, the mark of the Quad Cities. As a matter of fact, this building for five straight years has been named Arena of the Year in its size category in the United States. Seats right at 9,500 people. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. The X-Man is deep. Xavier Patterson. Little dancing around after about the eight-yard line. Those of you who are astute viewers of the Arena Football League may remember Xavier Patterson playing for New Jersey. They called him Xavier Brown in those days. Hey, folks, coming up Saturday on TNN, we'll have another ASA short track war for you. The ASA racers will be here in the state of Iowa, or right across the Mississippi, at least in Iowa. The Cedar Rapids area will host the Iowa 250. Hope you can see it Saturday at 3 Eastern and Pacific right here on TNN Sports. Here now, Quad Cities in the blue. Up 14 to 7, as you see. Sean King is in motion. Quick screen that time to Frank Carter gets out across the 10 to the 12-yard line. We've not taken a look at the starting Tennessee Valley defense. Don't want to slight those folks. Fuller, Heath Springer, a good one. Used to be 330 pounds when he played with the Nashville Cats. Now a relatively spelt 275. Bobby Washington, Grady Brown, and the destroyer, David Knott, number four in the Arena Football League in tackles. After that four-yard pickup, Dickin sends King in motion, looking for Sean King. He splits the defense, and he's down to the five-yard line. They are machine-like. And it's tough to stop an offense when they get a rhythm going. Here's Sean King, both defenders, one deep, one short. He goes right between, but Billy Dickin drops the ball exactly where it has to be. Sean King runs a corner route right there, hit inside, come back to the corner. He's double covered, but the ball's thrown perfectly. He drops it right into the basket. King's there for the reception. 35 yards on the pickup. Dickin, four of four, 85 yards in passing already here this evening. Eli, it's almost frightening the way the Quad yes. City can get the ball down the field and put it in the end zone. They don't think about first downs. They think about touchdowns. Yeah. The fullback is Carter. The motion man gets the handoff. Xavier Patterson, touchdown. A lot of folks thought he was going to go into the end zone for a pass. Well, he went in. And X-Man picks up the touchdown. Tremendous job by the blocking up front. Corey Brown, Damon Williams, Sean McNamara. They seal the outside. It's an easy handoff, and it's a reverse pass, a reverse run around by Xavier Patterson. Here, take a look at the left side right here. You're not going to see any white jerseys because they do a great job of sealing the outside. It's a non-toucher. It's an easy, a no-brainer, and Xavier Patterson just walks in for the touchdown. Three plays, 42 yards, that scoring drive. Brian Hurley who played with the Iowa Barnstormers back in 1998, converts the extra point. 
And Quad Cities is on top, 21 to 7. You know, I sat down yesterday with Coach Frank Hagee, the head coach of Quad Cities, and I said, all right, we've not seen you guys all year. Give me the lowdown. What makes your team so much better than everybody else? It all starts with the quarterback in arena football. I feel we have the best quarterback in arena football, too. Has just done a fantastic job of making reads and throwing with accuracy and being a leader and a competitor on the football field. And that's where it all starts. And then the second most important position, as far as I'm concerned, is the offensive specialist. And Sean King also has roles above the competition and show that he is the top offensive specialist in the league. Cannot argue with what Frank Hagee says. Well, by the way, if that name sounds familiar to those of you in the Arena Football League, his dad, Art Hagee, is the defensive coordinator and the director of player personnel for the Iowa Barnstormers. And Frank Hagee right there has also been assistant head coach at New Jersey, also coach of the Minnesota, uh, excuse me, the uh, Milwaukee Mustangs. And yes, I was right, the uh, dearly departed Minnesota Fighting Pike. You know, it's interesting, you see a lot of young coaches, their fathers are coaches, or their yeah. uncles are coaches. And it's almost a family thing where the head coach comes home and tells his son, we're going to diagram plays tonight, we'll go out and throw the football around. And his son likes to play the game, but he always ends up getting in coaching down the road. Kelly Fields will be deep to field Brian Hurley's kick. Hurley. A walk-on in Iowa, who then became a four-year starter. Off the net, Fields. He loses the football. Does he fall on it, or does Quad Cities get it back? Tennessee Valley hangs on to the football, but there is a flag on the play all the way at the other end of the field. Back at the 10-yard line at the other end of the field, Let's listen in to Tom McCabe, our referee. Offside on the kicking team, number 25. Three-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So they'll tack it on right there, moving the football right to the 15-yard line. Let's listen in now. Brian Snyder wearing one of our TNN microphones. Right yo-yo, 52 stack, wide corner on 101, ready? You heard the yo-yo, the 52 stack, the 50 series is their five-step drop. They want the wide receiver to run the corner out, obviously. They're going to do yo-yo, that's the motion. If he gets protection up front, they're going to try to get it deep. Yo-yo motion as you run back and then come right back to the line of scrimmage, as you saw. Complete. Tracy Kendall, who came to Tennessee Valley as a quarterback, has become one of the number one receivers, and there's an injury, a big injury, too. That's the tight end, Andy Fuller. Andy Fuller, who was a tight end at Auburn and was an all-conference performer in the Southeastern Conference, first team All-SEC back in 95. And Eli, he's a big part of their offense. Regular season and postseason, 18 receptions. 10 touchdowns, so he knows what to do with the football. He's a major part of their offense, taking pressure off the quarterback when he can leak out and catch the football. Andy was a free agent with the Miami Dolphins when he came out of Auburn. Don't know what happened there. There was just a whole bunch of bodies. Let's see if he just got caught up. Looking for number 82 there on the left of your screen. What happens is when you get this mass of bodies all in an area, you trip oh. down, people fall on top. Even look at the weight falling on top of them. Sometimes people fall on your knees, and it looks like it's a lower leg injury for Andy Fuller. You want to see what Quad Cities does? We're going to look at that play one more time. Watch number 90 for Quad Cities in blue, Sean McNamara. He comes up the middle like a bowling ball converting the 7-10 split. Watch number 90. Right here, I over mean, the center. This, folks. This is, this is just pressure. All he does is just get great leverage and just keeps driving, and he opens up his seam for the other defenders. Look at that. He finds a little hole, just gets pressure right up the gut, and puts pressure on Brian Snyder. He knows how to get his leverage. You saw his shoulder pads were much lower than the offensive blockers, and that's what you have to have on a great defensive player to get pressure. You've got to have great leverage. Get under the big fellas. Boy, there's a tough one right there. Big Andy Fuller, 6'4", 275. He's from Huntsville. After his days with the Dolphins, he played with the Barcelona Dragons of NFL Europe, or at that time it was still called the World League of American Football, then played in the Regional Football League down in Mobile, Alabama, with the Mobile Admirals. And Tom Luganville says, I cannot afford to be without Fuller, and Fuller's going right to the locker room. And the good thing about it, he walked off. Any player with a lot of pride wants to walk off. He may come back in this game, but may not. But the good sign is he got up and walked off on his own way. Left yo-yo, 53 -50. So Brian Snyder now working with Curtis James as the tight end. 
One touchdown each, but the comparison pretty much ends there. Flag on the play. Snyder's in trouble to midfield. Don't know if there was some holding there or maybe somebody jumped. It was tough to tell. As long as Snyder was running around, it defense jumped, it appeared, on that play. Outside number 58. On the defense, three-yard penalty, still first down. That is Corey Brown from the University of Iowa, who was acquired for his pass rush. He was a mid-season addition for Quad Cities Steam Wheelers. Neelai, keep an eye on all the blue jerseys around Brian Snyder when he runs with the football. Look at the hustle. They want to get after him. They see when he has the football, everybody on the defense wants to go after the football. So they do the mark off now to the 21-yard line. We are live on TNN. Your first look this season, quite possibly, at the AF2. Certainly it is ours on the Thursday night telecasts. Arena Football 2, same rules as the Arena Football League. Just played in smaller and medium-sized communities. Nice grab by Danny Thomas out of Eastern Kentucky. He is the number six receiver on the ball club, only his 20th catch of the year. Jeremy Wilkinson, they call him the wall, and that man, Cornelius Cole, in on the coverage. What was interesting on that play, Eli, they got a little smarter and trickier up front offensively. They went with a quick three-step drop. The offensive lineman cut the defenders. That allowed Brian Snyder to see downfield. He's down his pants away. He threw the football on time, completed the pass. That's what they have to do, go with those quick timing things. Mishandling the snap from center. Ryan tried the quarterback sneak, but bobbled the football. And everybody just kind of fell on things. And is not even going to get the yardage he needed. Sometimes you have a bobble like that. And he can pick up the yardage. It didn't even happen here. But right here, he bobbles the ball. But right there, they're not getting a push up front. There's nothing there. They're running into a brick wall. If you don't get a push up front, he can't get the first down anyway. And the offensive line is just getting stuffed by the defensive front of Quad City. On a third and goal. To me, a third and one. Snyder. Nice grab. What? Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas skying for it over top of Clarence Thompson. Touchdown, 15 yards. And an outstanding job by Danny Thomas of concentrating, getting his feet in bounds. He got a foot in bounds. But you see him up in the air. He's kind of awkward when he catches the ball, but he puts his feet backwards into the end zone and gets him in for the touchdown. Not a great job of protection. There's a little bit of penetration. He wanted to throw Billy, uh, Brian Snyder on the third step. Wasn't able to do it, but right there. Look at the concentration on Danny Thomas. Rolls to the right, throws to the end of the end zone, a little push off in front of him, but concentrates, turns acrobatically, and catches it for the touchdown. And on that grab, the first quarter has come to an end here at the mark of the Quad Cities. They will have the extra point coming up to wrap up the quarter. Then they will be shifting things to the other end of the field. The holder is Snyder. Michael Proctor will handle the extra point. And he does so flawlessly. He is 84 of 99. Proctor is on extra points this year. So it was a four-play drive. 35 yards, three minutes and five seconds. It's a one-touchdown game. There is a rhythm to life. We sleep at night and wake in the morning. It's this sleep cycle that helps keep us in a healthy balance. But for millions of Americans, sleep doesn't always come easy. Fortunately, there's Ambien. Ambien is a prescription sleep aid that can help you get a full night's sleep. With Ambien, you fall asleep fast, stay asleep longer, and generally wake without feeling groggy the next morning. No wonder Ambien is the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. Patients who abuse prescription sleep aids may become dependent. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for 7 to 10 days as needed. Your doctor will advise you about taking them longer. Take Ambien only when you can devote a full night to sleep and wake up rested and ready to start your day. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. 
That is a live shot out onto the Mississippi just outside the mark of the Quad Cities. It is a spectacular evening. It's been a great couple of days here. The folks in the Quad City area have just been so hospitable. There you see the mark of the Quad Cities, the home arena, not only for the AF2 team, but they also have a uh, team in the uh, Continental Basketball Association here, the Quad City Thunder. They also have a team in the uh, Colonial, uh, Colonial Hockey League uh, that has played here as well. They call them the Mallards. AF2 is a year old, that's all. That league began at the beginning of the season. They began with 15 teams, and unlike many other organizations who didn't get through year number one, only did they do get through in great ways, but they ended the year with the same franchises who began the year, and they're adding to that list. There will be 13 new teams next year, the first six of which have already been named, and there you see including Louisville, Kentucky. They signed their agreement just today to become part of AF2. So the master plan calls for 72 teams in four regions of the country by the year 2004. The league would span from Tacoma, Washington to Springfield, Massachusetts. But again, this league formed in April. Quite a job. Here now is Xavier Patterson. X-Man put away by the destroyer David Nutt. Jill, what's the latest on Andy Fuller? Well, I checked on him. He's still in the locker room. What happened was he had injured that ankle about two weeks ago, so he re-injured it tonight. He rolled over on it. He's in a lot of pain. They're going to retape it and see if he can get back out here because he really wants to be on the field. Back to you guys. Thank you. An ankle, an ankle sprain is almost worse than a broken bone. Absolutely. I would rather have a broken bone throughout my career than a bad sprain anytime. And a lot of times, I'd rather have a minor knee injury than an ankle injury because with the ankle, all you can do is tape it up. You can't put a brace or anything on it to sustain your support. Uh -huh. Billy Dickin, the quarterback. Complete to Vistendahl. Scott Vistendahl, who was a Division III Player of the Year at Augsburg College. There you see the first quarter stats. Oh, look at that time of possession, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can do stuff quickly in this league. Absolutely, and Quad Cities has been like that the entire season. The opposition has always held the ball longer than they have, but they can figure out a way to put points on the board in a hurry. And here's what's interesting. Tennessee Valley knew if they didn't turn the ball over, they could be in this football game. First quarter, zero turnovers. Now they've got to have some defensive stops, though. Tennessee Valley must. Xavier Patterson is in motion. Dickin to throw. Sean King off to the races. Around one man. Cuts back in. Remarkable. Touchdown. Touchdown, Quad City. Grady Brown, David Knott, Bobby Washington, Kelly Fields, they all Nobody could slow down Sean King. And the key on this play, the Tennessee Valley Vipers went to a soft zone. Look at them back here. They're talking about who they're going to take. But the incredible Sean King, keep an eye on him right here. The speed and quickness that he has. He has tremendous speed. But look at his quickness, cutting left, cutting right, finding the end zone. That's what Quad City's been able to do. And that's why Sean King is such a potent wide receiver and return specialist in the AFL team. 32 yards on that pass catch. Brian Hurley, no, he misses. Make a note of that one. He doesn't miss that many. Over the course of the year, he's 121 of 148. Another two-play drive, 41 yards, and only 157, 27-14. was enough but I but what do I know I'm just a simple sandwich man how is that Tony simply blimpy for hand rolled wraps
Thank you for calling the Speedy Glue helpline. Your call will be answered in 82 minutes. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. <coughs> Peanuts, caramel, and chocolate. That ought to hold you. Please stick with us. Hungry? Grab a Snickers. You see cars with nameplates like these on the hood. Mercedes-Benz AMG, Dodge Viper, Aston Martin. But did you know there's not a nameplate underneath it? Here, Mobile One, Corvette, Porsche, all these cars come with Mobile One in the engine and the recommendation to keep on using it. You don't have a car like that? Me neither. But it only costs a little more to treat mine the same. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Seven strokes per second. That's pretty much the cleaning speed of an ordinary toothbrush. 150 strokes per second. That's the cleaning speed of the new Colgate ActiBrush battery-powered toothbrush. It's designed to clean hard-to-reach places. Ordinary toothbrush, Colgate ActiBrush. Which do you think is clinically proven to clean better? For about $20, the Colgate ActiBrush, the power to clean better. Welcome back. There you see Andy Fuller. He has returned to the uh, Tennessee Valley bench. His ankle is heavily taped. Uh, the big guy from Auburn, back and available to coach Tom Lugan Bill. Welcome back, Eli Gold, Mark May, Jill Arrington, the whole crew. Our final telecast of the season. Hope you've enjoyed this year as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been a blast. Next year will be here before you know it. Fields to field it. Off the net. Seven yards deep. Can he turn the corner? No. He's to the five-yard line. Cornelius Cole will put him down. There's Sean King out of Wayne State of Nebraska. What a quarter he's had. What an explosive quarter. Here he just pulls right up the middle on a kickoff return. Tremendous blocking up front. Doesn't even get touched from start to finish. Here's a big touchdown reception. He gets by the defender. Once you get by the defender, it's an easy catch. And another long reception. It's almost a touchdown, but it's a deep reception. And the last one, as we just saw, another touchdown reception by Sean King. He's almost invincible out there. As soon as he touches the football, something electric happens. On the year, number one in points scored, number one in touchdowns, number two in receptions, number two in receiving yards. You get the idea. Number one in all-purpose yards. Bobby Washington makes the grab there for Tennessee Valley with Clarence Thompson acting as the color man. And Eli, if you're Tennessee Valley, you don't want to get in a shooting match with this Quad City team. They're so explosive offensively and their special teams, and they can do a tremendous job of creating turnovers. Corner. You've got the arrow and you've got the stack, Bonner. A one-on-one. Ready? Hurry up. Raise your hand. Ready? You hear him say, raise your hand, reminding the lineman to put his hand in the air, he who is the eligible receiver. Brian Snyder talking him through it all. He's got a man going deep, Washington. Bobby's there. He makes the grab down to the two with Hayo Watha Pfeiffer on the coverage. Bobby Washington, who was an honorable mention wide receiver in his days in the Ohio Valley Conference, showing you why right there. And an outstanding job, tremendous job by Bobby Washington. An over-the-shoulder catch, but the protection up front. Quarterback Ryan Snyder gets time to step back in the pocket and throw it deep. The ball's on time. Bobby Washington just turns over his shoulder. It's dropped right into his belly. 37 yards on the pickup. The number two receiver on the ball club, Bobby Washington, from Altamont Springs, Florida. Curtis James is the fullback. The motion man is Fields. Here's James. Ran up the back of his own man, Jason Stewart, as he tried to turn the corner and gets maybe a yard. There we go. 23 bases, you can go to the same side. Well, what is it again? Let's go, you know, 23 bases. Tom Luganbill, the head coach. He's just Left two years. 23 base, I'm gonna keep it. 0101, ready? 23. Let's go, yo. Let's go. Luganbill, only two years different in age from his quarterback, Brian Snyder. And you heard him say, I'm gonna keep it. Can I run it to his? He is, but they knew it. Scott Fistendahl smelled out that play and went laterally with his pursuit. Well done by the Division Three All-Star out of Augsburg. 
There's always an extra player on defense that isn't blocked. He's one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback. Keep an eye on Distenthal right there. He's got his eyes on nobody but the quarterback. Look at him. He drifts out. He's a quarterback one-on-one. -on -one. Let's just fire in and make the tackle. Beautiful one-on-one -on -one open field tackle. Now, Tennessee Valley, two of three in third down conversions tonight. Here's a big third and goal. Washington in motion. Straight. Washington. Touchdown. Touchdown from three yards away. I'll tell you, you got to give Tennessee Valley credit. In as imposing an atmosphere as you'll see, short of the San Jose Arena or America West. They're hanging right in there with the home team. They sure are. And Brian Snyder gets pressure. He knows where he's going to go with the football. He's not looking off. He fires a bullet right into Bobby Washington. He didn't look off. He knew exactly where he wanted to go. They were taking their one shot at getting it to Bobby Washington, and he did a great job of throwing the ball where it had to be. Michael Proctor staying perfect. And we have timeout on the field. Early in the second quarter here in Moline, Illinois, Arena Cup 2000, living up to its billing. Wendy's has a craving for a hot new sound. Enter Wendy's Search for Sizzling Sounds Contest, brought to you by TNN and CMT. All you have to do is write an original song that captures your love for hamburgers, like the ones you get at Wendy's. That classic combo of hot and juicy beef with your choice of crisp toppings. Just rush to Wendy's for all the details, or enter online at sizzlingsounds.com. If you win, you could be flying to Nashville to have your song professionally produced. Wendy's Search for Sizzling Sounds. Sponsored by TNN and CMT. They're not coming out. We're going in to get them. They're always hot. They're always sweaty. It's a cat and mouse game. We have some of the hottest detectives on the street to switch antiperspirant. Degree, ultra dry. Body heat activated. Does this work? When your body heat rises, Degree's powerful ultra dry form releases extra protection when you need it most. When the pressure is on, the heat is on, Degree kept up with me. He kept me dry. Degree kicks back. Degree, ultra dry. That stuff kicks in and takes care of business. Your body heat turns it on. Book them. I don't know, it's just so... Uh, we're not sure about the whole flame thing. The flames are a safety feature. Scenario. Let's say you're about to pump out that Bambino. Honk. You're on your way to the hospital? Bam. You get stuck in traffic. The flames intimidate the other cars right out of the way. Plus, it's a major chick magnet. The ASA AC Delco Series, Saturday at 3 Eastern on TNN. You think I'm trying to burn you here? <laughs> Welcome back to the mark. We've got ourselves a ball game. Glad you're with us here on TNN Sports. Odd City undefeated at 18-0. Tennessee Valley 10-6. Michael Proctor, the number six place kicker in AF2. Set to boot it away. Well, you got your sellout, Mark May. Absolutely, and AFL 2 game. An AFL 2 game is incredible to get the sellout, but they do a tremendous job of fan support in the Quad City area. Here's Sean King. There's Sean King. We've seen this before. Sean King pulled down by David Knott from behind. Big touchdown saving tackle by Knott. Let's go downstairs to Jill. Well, last night here in the Quad Cities, the AF2 award ceremonies were given out, and one of the awards went to the Augusta Coach, Coach of the Year. <laughs> I'm sure you're excited to get the respect. Now, you've been around this league a long time. Mike New used to play for the Nashville Cats in the Arena League, and now you're coaching. So how was it to get the respect in the new league AF2? Well, that's truly an honor to be respected by your peers, and that meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, and it's a great award, and I certainly heard a little bit. We wish our team was here, but we had a great season. What do you think of this game tonight? I'm sure you wish you were out here. You lost in the semifinals. It was a heartbreaker for you. What do you think of the game so far? Well, it's uh, Quad City's a very good football team, and Tennessee Valley knows in order to stay in this football game, they can't turn the ball over. But that team has a lot of heart and fight, and uh, they'll compete with this team. Okay, let's go back to Eli for one second. All right, Joe, thanks. That was a nice touchdown saving tackle by Bobby Washington. We have an injury down as well. That's Grady Brown out of Alabama A&M University. One of the uh, starting cornerbacks, uh, or as they call them in this league, defensive specialists. But Washington came up large on Sean King yet again. 
He definitely did. And Sean King is just amazing to watch when he gets the football. He's electrifying. He never goes down with the first tackler. He always makes the first tackler miss. That's a sign of a great football player. Grabbing the football and making that first tackler miss and then doing something with it. And he goes straight up the football field when he touches it. Quarterback Billy Dickin, 7 of 7, 135 yards, couple of touchdowns. Okay, 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 okay. He is eighth in all-time passing stats at Purdue. Led the Big Ten. Go, go left, home, 64 zone. Let's go, big fellas. I want, I want. Ready. The ball will be given to the big fullback in the backfield, Russ Van Zinga. And Wetzinger getting set to get the handoff. Let's see if he can power behind the big guys. Set up. Van Wetzinger, not the hole, but he drives forward. Does he get in? No signal yet. He does not get there. The ball crossed. Look where his knees are. You see it right there? He was down at that point as he then reached forward and put the ball over. Good shot, showing why there was no touchdown. Nice job by Van Wetzinger of keeping his feet moving, looking and pulling to the end zone. He wants it bad, but he's down before he crosses the goal line. Good call by the officiating crew, but nice job by Van Wetzinger of just keeping his feet driving towards the goal line. He's a local hero, Van Wetzinger is. Went to Augustana College where he was a linebacker. But he has been their go-to man at the goal line. Quick play again. They try the right side. Touchdown. They just ran it up to the goal line and kept on chugging. Trying to catch the defense by surprise. Quick snap. Quarterback Billy Dickens just powers his way in the end zone behind good blocking of his offensive line up front. He rushed for 13 touchdowns during the regular season. Here's just a quarterback keeper. Quick snap, get into the end zone, fall in, power it in. That's exactly what he does. That's his 14th rushing touchdown of the season. And Brian Hurley. Sun Bowl MVP when he played for Iowa back in the mid-90s. Converts the extra point. So it's 34-21. Let's go back downstairs to Jill. She's with another award winner from last night. That's right. There was another award given out, Offensive Player of the Year, and that went to quarterback of the Augusta team also. Aaron, I know that you want to be in this game tonight. How hard is it for you to watch? Well, it's hard to watch. You know, um, unfortunately, we're not here, but um, it's a blessing just to be here, and um, thank God for those two teams playing. And I know that you wish you, you could have been here, but your team did well. And how have you enjoyed? I know you played with Nashville as well behind Andy Kelly. But how have you enjoyed this AF2 this year? Well, I enjoyed it very well. Um, it's an opportunity for the guys who didn't get a chance to play in the AFL. And um, it's an opportunity to just play football, period. And um, we have a great team. And unfortunately, we're not here tonight. But um, again, bless those two teams out here and um, made the best team win. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Well, good luck to you next season. We'll look for you. Thanks. Okay, back to you, Eli. Hi, Jill. Thanks. And there are the awards that were handed out last Last night, Mike New and Aaron Sparrow, from whom we've already heard. Two of them here tonight on the field. Yeah, Cornelius Coe and Xavier Patterson, from whom we've already seen tonight. I'll tell you, there was a lot of discussion. A lot of folks here in the Quad Cities couldn't understand how Mike New, number two record in the league at 13 and three, how he could have beaten the local coach Frank Hagee, who was a perfect 16 and 0 in the regular season. Got a lot of press up here. A lot of folks disappointed, as you would expect. That one sails past everything and out of bounds. So there is the flag and the football comes out to the 20 yard line. Again, Tom McCabe, the referee, he and his crew voted upon and ranked to be here. Procedure on the kicking team, kicking kickball out of bounds by rule the ball split on the 20 yard line, first down. I was talking to Carl Paganelli, the supervisor of officials for Arena Football League. He said that every single play of every single game is looked at by the officiating staff. Some 1,500 plays a week. And through that, the officials are rated. Now, for financial reasons, every team in every city had their own group of officials who didn't travel. The same guys work the Quad City games every week at home. Same guys work the Tennessee Valley games. But when it came playoff time, those who earned the trip here were rewarded with it. Heavy pressure and going down. Heavy pressure. Big 58, Corey Brown, who was a mid-season addition to the ball club. 
and the penetration right up front by big number 90 Sean McNamara, but Corey Brown from the outside, he gets flushed out of the pocket by McNamara, but Corey Brown chases him down from the outside. It's a two-bagger right there. Quarterback Brian Snyder does not have a chance. When he sees the pressure up front, he doesn't have the speed to run away from the speed of Corey Brown on the outside. He has to get rid of the football. The tight end, Andy Fuller, is back in now, by the way, for Tennessee Valley. As a big second and 21 looms for the Vipers. Across the middle, nicely done to Tracy Kendall. Tracy Kendall, who was a quarterback when he went to Alabama A&M. As a matter of fact, he was the guy who used to throw and hand off to Barry Wagner, the uh, great uh, Iron Man from the San Jose Sabercats. What Tennessee Valley does, they go with their slide protection. The fullback comes to the end of the line. The line slides down. They do a great job of moving the pocket and giving quarterback Brian Snyder time to throw the football. But Tracy Kendall's a tremendous athlete. He's, he's yeah. almost the slash of AF2. He knows how to throw the football. He can throw the football, and he can definitely receive the football. But tonight on third downs, they're taking advantage of the situation. They have to continue that to stay competitive in this game. Here's a big one coming up here from midfield. Breakdown of the coverage, touchdown Tennessee Valley. Oh my! Two guys, Cole and Thompson, looked at each other at about the 12. There's Thompson. Cornelius Cole is the other guy, number two. They looked at each other, and it was an Alphonse Gaston. You take him. No, you take him. Nobody took him. And here's the key. After he runs by them, both of them thought the other one had him covered. He just continues to go with his route. He splits both of them right there. No one's even close to him. It's an easy pitch and catch. It's so but the quarterback, close. Brian Snyder, it was key on that play. Two players were draped on him at the waist and at the legs. He throws it for the touchdown. And Michael Proctor again with the extra points. Well, we've got ourselves a dandy. That was a three-play drive. 30 yards, 2 minutes and 33 seconds. This one's far from over. Thirty-three years, 186 million batteries, over 700 billion starts, and now Die Hard is stopping. Car thieves. Introducing the Die Hard Security Battery, the only battery that attacks auto theft at the source. The power source. Die Hard Security. To learn more, call us or come see it at Sears. The good life at a great price, guaranteed. Boom! Stop dead in his track. That's how fast, tough acting Tenactin pump spray works. Tenactin stops the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than Lamisil AT. Tackle athlete's foot symptoms in seconds with tough acting Tenactin. Yeah, show me the money, I'm telling you. Oh, oh boy. It's the age-old test of man against beast. Don't miss championship bull riding from Charlotte. Sunday night at 9 Eastern and Pacific on TNN. Get into the zone. Kick action Friday. Will zone Friday. So real, you can feel it. Will zone Friday. Action that never stops. The battle you can't miss. Thrill Zone Friday on TNN. The baddest of the bad are battling it out on TNN's Bad Boys League. These boys are tough as nails and ready to rumble. I don't like you. And anyone who gets in their way better look out. When the punches start flying and the weeks start crying, you'll know you're in the right place. Right? Tanya Harding rounds up the roughest, rowdiest, rottenest scoundrels for a week of trouble with a capital T. Better not miss it. TNN's Bad Boys Week starts Monday. TNN Action Wednesdays are hotter than ever on the Magnificent Seven. Is that little Billy Travis? Mary's son comes home. Then on 18 Wheels of Justice. You're driving us out of here. Agent Baxter is in trouble. And on Dead Man's Gun. His name is Boucher. He has to pay for what he's done. The action starts at 8 Eastern with the Magnificent Seven, followed by 18 Wheels of Justice at 9 and Dead Man's Gun at 10. Only on TNN Action Wednesdays. One hot night. night. Welcome back, everybody, at the Mark of the Quad Cities. Our TNN crew giving you pictures. 
of Arena Cup 2000. Keep an eye on number 90, McNamara, right there pushing the pocket, but on the outside, he's going to get pressure by Corey Brown, but a tremendous job by quarterback Brian Snyder. Here's the quarterback that knows he's going to get tattooed. He's going to get hit by somebody. Throws that little jump pass and throws it and gets the ball on time to his wide receiver, Kelly Fields. He's been hammered the entire evening, gets pushed around in the pocket. He knows the pressure's coming, but he gets rid of the ball just in time to his wide receiver, Kelly Fields, down the field of play. There's the X-man, Xavier Patterson. He has two touchdown runbacks of kickoffs this year. Michael Proctor with a strong leg to boot it away. And over end, the X-Man. Patterson still going outside of Fuller. Still alive, down to about the 15-yard line. Bobby Washington finally makes the special teams tackle on a 38-yard return. Well, folks, it is the sprint car race that every driver wants to win, and it's coming up. The Amico Knoxville Nationals, don't miss it. It is sprint car racing's most prestigious race, and it comes your way this Saturday night, August the 12th, at 10 Eastern and Pacific. It is right here on TNN Sports. That is a spectacular event. Ralph Shaheen, Brad Doty, Steve Evans, the whole crew, Bobby Gerald, Dave Argabright, you're going to be in for a treat. Check out the Amico Knoxville Nationals. Brian Snyder. There's Sean King on the receiving end of another bullet. Eli, that was the first time that Sean King was brought down by the first tackle. Now, great job by David Knott out there, blanket coverage. Let him catch the football and tackle him, but don't let him outfox the first tackler. Make a move, he goes up field with the ball. Hey, you've got to collapse on him. You've got to get him by the ankles. Don't watch his shoulders, you watch his hips. Quad City up by a touchdown as we near halftime. Arena Cup 2000, the championship game of AF2. Arena Football 2. There's the X-Man, Patterson. He's in. Touchdown, Quad City. A big play receiver. Oh, man. It doesn't get any more special than that. That's what the Arena Football League and AF2 is all about. What the X-Man just did after the score of a touchdown. And it keeps the fans involved in the game. But out here, it's a quick screen pass to the outside. Right here on the outside, look at his blocking. Number one and number 19 getting him blocking on the outside. But a great job by Xavier Patterson of keeping his feet, keeping them moving, and not going down with the first tackle. But what's impressive on the play, Sean King, Jeremy Wilkinson on the outside blocking for their other compadre back there to try to get him in the end zone. That was a 12-yard screen Great. pass. Brian Hurley missed an extra point earlier, but uh, converts on that one. So the scoring drive is going to be another quickie, as they all seem to be, for Quad City. Two plays, 17 yards in two minutes and three seconds. Just your basic screen, but with some good blocking after the catch. Oh, tremendous on the outside. Sean King and Jeremy Wilkerson out here. Keep an eye on the blockers right here. You're going to see him in the screen right there. Watch the seal block here, but watch right here. He's going to take the ball, follow his blockers, and get into the end zone. Tremendous job by Xavier Patterson. There's the block on the outside. Gets another block down the field to play by his fullback, Russ Van Wetzinger. Touchdown. Xavier Patterson. Now that's teamwork. That's execution down the field to play. The one thing about this team, they give it up for each other. They go down, they make blocks, they get in the end zone. It's a common goal, and every time they touch the ball, they want to put points on the score. You know, if this is your first look at the AF2, I asked the coaches, both coaches, I said, how would your teams do in the irregular arena football league? And interestingly, they said, we could not compete at all. He said, we're going to put on a spectacular game tonight. He said, but in any form of football, that the size, the speed, the strength is different from one league to the next. Uh, this team, Quad Cities, they even had a scrimmage, a practice scrimmage against the Iowa Barnstormers, and that man, Frank Hagee, said it was not pretty. They thought that their specialty players, their wide receivers and quarterback, would compete with the players, but the guys up front, the offensive and defensive linemen, they weren't big enough, they weren't strong enough, and not enough good athletes. I talked with Frank Hagee in great detail yesterday about those differences, and he said, to the educated football eye, you can really pick them out fairly easily. On every level of football, Division three to Division two, Division two to Division one, NFL to NFL Europe, the biggest separator is the line play, and it's the same thing in arena football. 
they're just bigger, faster, and stronger overall than our guys. Now, we have a couple guys that can definitely compete and that can play with them, but overall, the line play is a big difference. I mean, if we had to line up against Arena One team, I don't think we could protect the passer for too long. <laughs> but you know what he forgot? Intelligence. Smart guys up front that can do the job. This is a team, they know their limitations. They have to rely on the big guys up front. Hey, each level, it's the guys up front. That's where your bread is buttered. Why do I feel like I'm sitting next to Jesse the Body Ventura here? What is this? I, the coach is talking about line play, and this guy is sitting here flexing and do all of this stuff. So, uh, But that's really the difference. It, it is in any type of football. You're a dandy. <laughs> hey, they named an arena after me. I can feel pumped up tonight. That's right. The mark of the Quad Cities. Here's Fields off the net, seven yards deep. And the special teams work swarming Jamar Ward. He'll get credit for the put down on that 15 yard return. So you've got Billy Dickin against uh, Snyder, the two offenses. Fairly close, so look at that total yardage within five. Absolutely, but Quad City, every time they touch the ball, they get it in the end zone, and they don't take eight or ten plays. They do it in two or three plays. That's the difference between these teams. Tennessee Valley Vipers, they'll take their time. They'll massage the football. They'll look for their openings and take advantage of it. But Quad City, it's all out. Everything to the wall, just get it in the end zone. Here's Snyder now at quarterback. Jack Fields the motion man. Fields has it. Pays the price at the 17. You know, in the two playoff games to this point, Tennessee Valley's defense has held the opponents to just 34 points per game. That's in two games, full games. Tonight, Quad City has already scored 41, and you see we're still 90 ticks of the clock away from halftime. That's just the explosiveness of Quad City. And if you look at it, even on the coverage team, which is very big, they've got tremendous speed on the outside. Timeout is being taken now by Quad City. They hope to stop the clock and uh, then get the ball back with time to score. But their dominance, I can't imagine, and I'm sure you can't either, any other oh. team in pro football of any level that would be potentially 19-0, and 0, even better than that great Dolphin bunch. Not even close. It's like a walk in the park for this football team. They don't play them close. They don't want to keep them close. They'll give everybody an opportunity to play. They'll even throw the water boy in there. They had a game this season where they scored 103 points and held their opponent to three. They beat a team by 100 points. 103 to 3. That coach, I asked him yesterday, too, we were talking. I said, what happened last week, his team, Quad Cities, went the entire third quarter. Listen to this, folks. They went the entire third quarter snapping the football exactly once. They had the ball for one offensive play. That came with two seconds to go in the quarter. And, of course, instinctively, you would say, my goodness, that must have been ugly. They scored 21 points in the quarter. <laughs> it was ugly for the other team. It was. They were two 50-yard kickoff returns, one by Xavier Patterson, one by Sean King. Then Jeremy Wilkinson scooped up a fumble, ran it back for 15 yards, and another score. I mean, they even score when they haven't they, they even beat you when they haven't got the offense out there. Well, I think as a whole, when you look at Quad City, they have better athletes throughout their entire roster than the rest of the teams in the AF2. But you folks in Huntsville, we're not conceding this game at all. This not one's all. still got a lot of football to play. Nice grab, Danny Thomas. I expect to see Marlo Thomas out here cheering <laughs> somewhere. Make room for Daddy. That girl. Yes, timeout being signaled this time. And it'll be the second in this sequence. Taken by Quad City. They've got one remaining. Let's see what Tom Luganville and quarterback Brian Snyder come up with here. Coach, coach, coach. Protect the ball. I know. You grab it, if you don't get extra yards. Way to go up front, fellas. Just going, start to throw them back now. Good job. You know how they win games. They get the ball. Nice job. All right. You get some at 30. You check it. He's walking up on me. He cannot outrun me. All right. Good job. My first read, though, bro. I Way to hold on to that. Let's go. Why? No. Go left, yo yo. 32 sail. Go sail to flash the stack. Come here. Wait, 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 wait. Left, yo yo. That means sail, slant, stack. Left, yo yo, 32 sail. Here we go. Left, yo yo, 32 sail. Listen up. We're going to do it on freeze. Hey, come here. Hurry up. Left, yo yo, 32 sail. Freeze. Freeze. On two, on two, ready? And you Hurry heard up. the coach say, hang on to the football. 
folks, they have a remarkable statistic. Look at that. Plus 55 is unheard of. And I played on this Washington Redskins football team. We walked through the regular season, but unfortunately, we got to the Super Bowl and yeah. were defeated by the Los Angeles Raiders. Hey! Complete hard run, not going to get to the first down. Tracy Kendall will be a couple of yards shy, but Tennessee Valley does have their uh, full complement of timeouts. Jeremy Wilkinson made that stop as we are now at the one-minute warning. So we're getting close to halftime. The first half has been a couple of heavyweights getting back up off the canvas. Hungry for seafood? When your hunger strikes, there's only one thing to do. Head to Red Lobster for lobster and shrimp. Sweet, succulent lobster together with mouth-watering shrimp. Just $12.99 right now at Red Lobster. So hurry in and get it before it's gone. A fact is anything you can convince someone else to believe. Consciousness is that annoying thing between naps. A shower is halfway between bed and the world. A whisper is the fastest way to spread a secret. Karaoke is Japanese for tone deaf. When your juices are going, you see life for what it really is. Have a Starburst and let the real fruit juice do its thing for you. Starburst, get your juices going. One minute remaining until halftime, and you know what halftime brings for the players a chance to relax and for us to bring you Jill Arrington and the degree halftime report inside Arena Football. We'll look at this weekend's semifinal matchups for the Arena Football League, getting set for the Arena Bowl next weekend. We'll take a look at the Arena Football League plays of the year. Highlights and stats of this first half. Lots coming up. The Degree Halftime Report, hosted by Miss Jill Arrington at an omission. Remember, Tennessee Valley has all their timeouts remaining, all three of them. Keith Joseph is the fullback, and now there's timeout taken. The officials wanted to talk things over. Now Tom McCabe says, let's go ahead and play. Little question on the clock that was being reset. Snyder Fields to the three. Nicely done, Kelly Fields. Clarence Thompson put the woe on him with help by Jeremy Wilkinson. Kelly Fields, he has done a bit of everything this year for Tennessee Valley. He's a big league player for this football team, and he's the player that I said before, they have to get the ball to him. They design plays for him, and quarterback Ryan Snyder will look only one direction when they need a big play, and that's to Kelly Field. He is in the top 10 in receptions in the league at number four, number five in receiving yards. He's number three in all-purpose yards, 181 yards a game. And he's a, probably, as the coach told us yesterday, the most coachable athlete he has ever worked with in his career. He's most respected by his teammates. He's one of the players that they hang their hat on at all times. What a shot in the arm. This would be going into the break. Everybody's covered. Snyder will eat the ball back at the seven-yard line. Jamar Ward, number 99. Jay Eilers, number 95. All in on the pursuit. And there's timeout taken by Tennessee Valley. The pursuit in a small field is really magnified. But the key to this play is downfield. The coverage men are covering the wide receivers. Brian Snyder has nowhere to go with the football. You look at this play and you say, well, he took a loss on that play. That's a smart play because Brian Snyder protected the football. He didn't force it in a short area where the ball would be tipped or interception. He protected the football for his football team and gave him another opportunity. Now they still have opportunities to take a shot at the end zone. I'm impressed at Big 99 Jamar Ward. I mean, how agile. At 6'3", 335. We call big guys like that dancing on light bulbs. Ha, ha, ha. 
that's why. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. They're just listening as the coach tells them exactly what they're going to run. Go. Empty on 101. Ready? If you don't like it, throw it away. Don't pull off the net. Let's go. Always your mind this quarterback to protect the football. We need to walk away with points before halftime. It is August the 10th. The season began March 31st for these teams. It's all come down to this final game. Nearly picked, but tipped out of bounds. That was Jeremy Wilkinson, the sixth pass this year that he has broken up. Eric Rogers, number eight, was the intended receiver. And for this play, he's got to look off. He's only looking one way with the football. He needs to look off the other direction to get the defense to flow with him, but he doesn't. But look at how high this defended back right there is guys. And he's a linebacker for them, Jeremy Wilkinson. He looks like a defensive back on the play, but he also plays linebacker. They call him the wall. He has a science in education degree from Northern Michigan. Here's a huge third down play. Motion man is Thomas. The straight, nearly intercepted by Cornelius Cole, but it is incomplete, and there's a flag down. A flag on the play, nearly the ninth interception of the year for Cornelius Cole. And that's a play where quarterback Brian Snyder... Illegal pushed. defense. He didn't have to throw that ball. He really tried to push the defense and throw the ball. But here's an opportunity for them to take advantage of the Quad Legal City Steam Rollers. Number 99 drifting downfield. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Jamar says, I wasn't drifting. I was just standing there. He, there, he said, he was tired. Everybody else was moving back. Backers. I was just standing out there. <laughs> but what happens is you have to be head-to-head -head on the man over you and rush the quarterback. You can't drift out to prevent the quarterback throwing lanes. And that's what Jamar Ward did on the play. That's an illegal defense. But it's pretty tough. They're down there in the goal line. Here you got a 330-pounder. He takes one step either way, and it could be an illegal defense. Two timeouts remaining for the team in white. Tennessee Valley. First and goal from the three as we near halftime. They're going to throw. Nearly intercepted. Danny Thomas threw it. And the X-Man, Xavier Patterson, came up with the deflect. Two major keys on this play. Danny Thomas has to sell the run. He's drifting in the backfield. It doesn't look like a pass, but what a great play by Xavier Patterson right there. He should have had the interception, but wide open in the back of the end zone. Keep an eye on the back of the end zone. He's got to sell the run better, but in the back of the end zone, they've got their receiver wide open. Look at that play right there. Tracy Kendall is wide open. If he throws a better pass, that's a touchdown. Eight seconds. Everybody's coming again, and it's thrown away, and over the wall goes the receiver, Danny Thomas. And now Michael Proctor will be called on with four seconds to go after Tennessee Valley takes time. The Steve Willer defense, they really bowled their backs on this play. No one was open, but a great job of getting open by Fields right here. Look at Kelly Fields. He's open, throwing the ball now. Drift to the goalpost. That's what you want your wide receiver to do. If you're covered and scrambled, you need to find the goalpost. We'll loft the ball in there, but the quarterback, Brian Snyder, did not see him open. And there is Michael Proctor. He had a 43-yard kick earlier this year, missed that 56-yarder uh, in the ball game tonight. This is going to be a chip shot. It'll be a 19-yard attempt. He is three of five from this distance this year. This is a big kick for him. He's a big kick right here. Because at least offensively, they can go into halftime and say, we can play offensively with Quad City. We know we can put points on the board. It's a big lift going into halftime if he makes it. Got it. And that is halftime. It will be a 10-point game on the 19-yard field goal by Michael Proctor. Billy Dickens, 9 of 9, 152 yards, leading his team on the field and into the locker room. Halftime in Arena Cup 2000. Jill's going to be along with the degree halftime report. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've got 30 more minutes of football when we return to the mark of the Quad Cities on Championship Night.
with a car this old, you expect some miles on the clock. But this one has over a million. In a real test for Mobile One, it equaled 40 laps around the world. Then they tore down the engine. And many of the parts, even the piston rings, were almost like new after a million miles. You want your car to last? Use Mobile One. And I figure you'll wear out your seats before you wear out your engine. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Hi, I'm Tony Conda. Our ad agency told me if you want to sell your wraps, Tony, book kids in your commercials. I told them oven roasted deli turkey and guacamole in a spinach tortilla was enough. But I, but what do I know? I'm just a simple sandwich man. How is that, Tony? Simple Blimpy for hand rolled wraps. You're sweating like crazy. You got TV cameras all over you. The last thing you want is this white pumpy thing running down your arm. It's just rude. We asked some of the hottest pros under the sun to switch anti burst prints. It's a green visible solid? What's that? I would assume it goes on clear, but I'm not sure I believe that. When your body heats up, the green invisible solid releases extra protection with a clear difference. Right there. See, there's no white stuff. The harder I work, the harder it works. No flaking, no funk, no Klingons. Degree Invisible Solid. Works hard, but never shows. After the match, there's a ton of girls. You gotta be cool. the Quad City Steam Wheelers. By the score at halftime, it's Quad City 41, Tennessee Valley Vipers 31. Well, the semifinal matchups are all set for the Arena Football League. So while we're at halftime of Arena Cup 2000, I thought we'd take some time and look at this weekend's matchup as I take you inside Arena Football. The quest for Arena Bowl 14 continues this weekend as San Jose plays host to Nashville in the first of two semifinal games. The Sabercats danced into the playoffs last week against Oklahoma, showing plenty of fancy footwork, not to mention plenty of offense. Once again, the boys in green were led by quarterback Mark Grieve and ultimate deep threat Steve Pappen. After the impressive win, San Jose now looks well on their way to claiming their first ever championship. To do so, they'll have to face a Nashville team that's done a little dancing of their own this postseason. After being on cruise control against Grand Rapids in the first round, the Cats brought a more bruising style of play to Iowa last week in the quarterfinals. Determined not to be pushed around, Corey Fleming went above and beyond the call of duty to preserve the Nashville win. Much to the delight of his buddy Andy Kelly and head coach Pat Sperduto. On Sunday, second-seeded Orlando will try to defend its home turf against the fifth-seed Arizona Rattlers. The Predators began their run towards a third straight Arena Bowl appearance last week with a rubber match victory over arch-rival Tampa Bay. Once again relying on their opportunistic defense to force turnovers, Orlando proceeded to beat up on the storm, and you can bet they have every intention of doing the same this week against Arizona. Arizona, it comes down to pride. Last week, Arizona derailed the playoff hopes of the defending champion Albany Firebirds with big games coming from guys like Maurice Bryant and Muhammad Oliver. But the victory celebration was short-lived as Cedric Bonner dropped back for the last time this season, suffering a torn ACL in his right knee. With Bonner now gone, the Arizona championship hopes must rest on the shoulders of an all-too-familiar face. As we recap the schedule for this weekend's semifinal action, it will be Nashville at San Jose Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and then Arizona at Orlando at 1.30 Eastern on Sunday, with coverage provided by ESPN2. Now that we've looked ahead to this weekend's AFL action, we're going to take some time to look back at some of the more memorable moments of the season. That's coming up when the Degree Halftime Report continues. Quad Cities leads by 10 at halftime. We're back with more of the Degree Halftime Report after this. for Nintendo 64 game console, rated T for team. Army men, air combat. Good to go. Boom! Stop that in his track. 
That's how fast, tough actin Tenactin pump spray works. Tenactin stops the itching and burning of athlete's foot better than Lamisil AT. Tackle athlete's foot symptoms in seconds with tough actin Tenactin. Want laundry as fresh as the mountain air? Try Sierra, the fabric softener. Once bugs get into your home, there's only one way to get them out. Call the man, the Orkin Man, at 1-800-800-ORKIN. This I call the Young Family Special. It's reliable, it's practical, but uh, got a little edge to it. This car says family. Follow more. Check this out. Huh? Huh? There's only one seat. That keeps the family closer. This isn't safe. Of course it's safe. It's safe with a little edge. Edgy safe, I like to call it. The Colonel's Truck Accessories Nationals, August 20th on TNN. 30 minutes left to play in this one. The score's a half. Quad Cities leads 41 to 31. Well, it's been a memorable season in the AFL this year with many record-setting performances and last-second heroics. Some have been a little more memorable than others, so let's take a look back at the plays of the year. Report. Eli and Mark will recap the first half with highlights and stats, so stick around for Arena Cup 2000. There is a rhythm to life. We sleep at night and wake in the morning. It's this sleep cycle that helps keep us in a healthy balance. But for millions of Americans, sleep doesn't always come easy. Fortunately, there's Ambien. Ambien is a prescription sleep aid that can help you get a full night's sleep. With Ambien, you fall asleep fast, stay asleep longer, and generally wake without feeling groggy the next morning. No wonder Ambien is the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. Patients who abuse prescription sleep aids may become dependent. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for seven to 10 days as needed. Your doctor will advise you about taking them longer. Take Ambien only when you can devote a full night to sleep and wake up rested and ready to start your day. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. No more half-naked women. No more bonds. Should we call it porno jam? Nothing more interesting than a good girl gone bad. Roller Jam. Season premiere. Friday at 9, 8 Central on TNN. 
Bob Vila tells homeowners how to get out from under credit card debt. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and these are offers to get credit cards. It's pretty easy to get them, not so easy to get out from under the bills. How many credit card bills do you get each month? Three, five, more? And how much interest are you paying? 16, 18%? Do you even know? And don't be fooled by introductory rates that only last a few months. You can eliminate those bills. You can stop paying that high interest. Here's how. Just call Home 123. The loan counselors at Home 123 will show you how to turn your high interest credit card bills into one bill that's probably a lot less than you're paying now. And the interest may even be tax deductible, unlike credit card interest. Imagine just one bill a month and money left in your pocket. So, if you own your own home, call Home 123 right now and discover how to get rid of all those credit card bills. Call 1-800-HOME-123 or visit us on the web at home123.org.